So in this video, I want to talk about the activation of the sympathetic nervous system. So the sympathetic nervous system is the division of the autonomic nervous system that equips us for the worst case scenario. It is activated when we are under stress. And therefore, the sympathetic nervous system is also referred sometimes as our fight and flight response. So let's just predict what happens to all our effector organs when the sympathetic nervous system is activated. When we are in a kind of a worst case scenario, a lion is after us, a lion is attacking us. So let's just walk through all the different effector organs and see what's going to happen. Let's start in the top. Let's start with the eyes. What is going to happen to our eyes? So first, let's think about our pupillae. So our pupillae are going to dilate. So we're going to get pupillary dilation. Why is that? Because we want to be equipped for the worst case scenario. So the lion could attack us in the dark. And only a dilated pupil is going to be able to collect as much light as possible. And therefore, we will be able to see in the dark. What is going to be happening to the accommodation? We're going to accommodate for far vision. Because now when we finally climbed up the tree, it's going to be way more important to see if the lion is still after us or if there's another lion following us. So we're going to accommodate for far vision. What's going to happen to our bronchioles? We're going to get bronchodilation because now we're going to want to collect as much oxygen as possible. What is going to happen to our skin? We're going to start sweating. So sweating is going to be increased. Why is that? Because we don't want to now develop a fever. And when we are running away from a lion, well, there's going to be more heat produced. And therefore, we want to get rid of all this extra body heat that we produce. So we're going to increase sweating. What is going to happen to our heart? Well, our heart is going to generally be stimulated because we want to pump as much oxygen through our body. So heart rate and heart force contractility is going to be increased. We're also going to increase AV conduction velocity. Now what's going to happen to our GI tract? So now it's definitely not a good time to digest. So therefore we should relax our GI motility. So there's going to be less GI motility, but the sphincters, they should be tight. They should be closed because we don't want to now, um, defecate. So therefore, the smooth muscle sphincter tone is going to be up. Similarly, what we're going to see in the urinary tract. So when we're looking um, at a bladder here, it's going to be surrounded by this tetrazo muscle. And this tetrazo muscle, it should be definitively re be relaxed because we want to fill the bladder as much as possible. But the sphincter, there's here this smooth muscle internal sphincter. This should be tight. This should be closed so that not the urine is going to come out through the urethra. And this is a detrasor muscle that should relax. Now what happens to our blood vessels? Here's a little bit more complicated because it depends on the location where you're looking at. So we don't need now blood in our viscera and our skin. After all, the line could bite us and we don't want to lose blood. So we're going to see vasoconstriction in viscera and skin. But where do we need now blood? We need it in the skeletal muscle to be able to run away. Therefore, in the skeletal muscle, we're going to see vasodilation. So it really depends on the location where you're looking at, where do you want the blood flow. Now we have a couple of other organs that we need to discuss. The liver, which is very important for some um, metabolism to happen. So we're going to now make more glucose to be able to run away from the lion. We want to have energy. So we're going to have increased gluconeogenesis. So we make glucose from scratch, new glucose. And we're also going to increase glycogenolysis. We're going to break down glycogen to get glucose. So all these things are going to increase glucose production. In the kidney, we're going to stimulate renin production. Renin is a little enzyme that helps you to make angiotensin 2, which is also a very potent vasoconstrictor. So these are the most important effects once we're going to have our sympathetic nervous system activated. And what I want to do now is just to put in the receptors that mediate these responses. And as I have discussed in another video, 
I always would like to start first thinking about the beta-1 receptor because it's the most selective in terms of its location. We find it only on the heart and on the kidney. So therefore we can say, well, these responses must be mediated by the beta-1 receptor, heart and kidney. And you're done with beta-1. And then I have also discussed in another video that alpha-1 and beta-2 have very opposing effects. Alpha-1 mediates smooth muscle contraction and beta-2 mediates smooth muscle relaxation. So let's put in now these different receptors and let's start with the alpha-1 receptor. So where do we have smooth muscle contraction? Definitely here at the smooth muscle sphincter. So that needs to be alpha-1. Vasoconstriction of blood vessels, that needs to be alpha-1. And then for the pupillar uh, aperture, this is a little bit more complicated, but I have also another video on that that shows you that you're going to um, dilate your pupils if you constrict, constrict the pupillar dilator muscle. So the muscle that pulls out the pupil when it constricts leads to pupillary dilation, so that's alpha-1 effect. And that's it about the alpha-1 and then Basically, the remainder are going to be affected or mediated by the beta receptors. And um, so let's start with the obvious ones. Well, always when we see dilation, that needs to be a beta 2 effect. So we're going to have bronchioles dilating, all relaxation, GI tract motility, it's going to relax. The detrasor muscle is going to relax. And there's actually also a beta 3 effect, which we normally don't talk about, but we have actually a drug that affects a beta 3. So let's put it here. And then Vasodilation also needs to be better too. And the liver, all these metabolic effects are also better too and actually also better three. Now, um, the accommodation for far vision is also a little bit more complicated, which I've described in another video. But if you watch it, you're also going to realize that if the sphincter is going to relax, um, the sonules are going to tighten and that's going to bring the lens in a more flat shape what you need to accommodate for far vision. So now there's just one receptor, um, what I kind of forgot here, and this on, on purpose, and that's the response to sweating. So we sweat when we run away from the lion, but this is not mediated, sweating is not mediated by adrenergic transmission. It is actually mediated by cholinergic transmission. So acetylcholine is released onto the sweat glands, and therefore M3, the so cholinergic receptor, mediates this response. This concludes the video on the activation of the sympathetic nervous system.